Good afternoon. Welcome to Alabama A&M University's Women of Empowerment Tea, celebrating Women's Week, sponsored by the Office of Student Activities and Leadership Development. I just want to say to all of you beautiful women, continue to be encouraging, continue to be enlightening, and continue to be the empowering women that you are. Please welcome to the stage Ms. Sonoya Williams doing the welcome. She's the Director of Veterans Affairs and Disability Services. She will be followed by Dr. Tanya Perry, Chairperson for Social Work, Psychology and Counseling doing the occasion. Please welcome them with a round of applause. Don't judge me by my looks, my clothes, or the way I wear my hair. My beauty is not limited to my looks or my, the way I walk. Define me by the emotional battles that I fight each day. Define me by the way I keep smiling no matter how emotionally worked up I am. I am sensitive and over-emotional at times, but I am not weak. I have been broken, shattered, rebuilt, yet I am a woman of endurance, confidence, and courage. I have the capacity to endure pain and survive despite all of the trials and tribulations I have experienced in my life. During these times, I had to learn how to climb the high mountains. I had to learn how to walk through the low, low valleys. As a woman of strength, I am no coward. I had to learn to smile through my tears and never forget that these battles are not mine, yet they are the Lord's. So I had to stop feeling sorry for myself, take the covers off of my head, then force myself to get out of bed. When I rose, huh, I knew I was ready. I knew I had to put on the whole armor of God. I had to put on the shoes of the gospel. I had to put on the breastplate of righteousness, the helmet of salvation, and I had to get the saw, which was the word of God, in my hand. Only then did I develop a new attitude. Good afternoon to all of my courageous, confident, strong, phenomenal, and diva sisters. It is with great pleasure that I have the opportunity to stand here before you as a woman of color and as a woman of strength to share my testimony of how a strong woman wears her pain like a pair of stilettos. No matter how it hurts, all you see is the beauty. So sit back, relax, and absorb the message that each beautiful and strong woman has to share. Thank you. To First Lady Abigail Hugini, uh, Trustee Jones, our special, special guest, Dr. Jackie, uh, to members of the uh, cabinet and members of the dais, uh, and all who are assembled here today, good afternoon. Sisters, you are absolutely resplendent. Just look around the room um, and admire how beautiful you are. You're adorned in all the vibrant, beautiful colors of spring. Um, and we're women, and when women come together, great things happen. Let's take a look at more closely at the word woman. W 
represents the reality that women are wonderful jewels, meticulously and masterfully created. And it's because of us, the sun shines a little brighter, burdens are a little lighter, and fruit is a little sweeter. O represents our outstanding ability to perform and balance multiple roles as we support our families, our faith institutions, and our communities, all while excelling in various occupational spheres. M represents the reality that we've all been molded by God to be delicate enough to love and to nurture others, but strong enough to bear children, to withstand life's challenges and overcome hardships and persist, come what may. A represents the reality that we are always faithful. We are forever aware from whence cometh our strength, and we understand the power of grace and of our foremother's prayers, and that it is this power that allows us to manifest the magnificent. In represents the reality that women are naturally beautiful. God has created us with special physical attributes that distinguish us from men to include our curves and our smiles, our fragrance, our essence, and a special glow that radiates from within. Sisters, never forget that we are wonderful jewels. We have an outstanding ability to do what must be done. We have been molded by the Creator. We are always faithful, and we are naturally beautiful. In other words, we are simply magnificent. We're all of that. On behalf of Mrs. Diane Anderson Greer and the Women's Week Planning Committee, we are elated that you've joined us today on the occasion of a Tea on the Hill in celebration of women, in celebration of us. Enjoy the program. Now, please welcome Ms. Calandra Terry, speech language pathologist, as she gives us the poem, Phenomenal Woman. Pretty women wonder where my secret lies. I'm not cute or built to suit a fashion model size. But when I start to tell them, they think I'm telling lies. I say, it's in the reach of my arms, the span of my lips, the stride of my step, the curl of my lips. I'm a woman, phenomenally. I walk into a room just as cool as you please, and to a man the fellows stand or fall down on their knees. Then they swarm around me a hive of honeybees. I say, it's the fire in my eyes, the flash of my teeth, the swing in my waist, the joy in my feet. I'm a woman, phenomenally. Men themselves have wondered what they see in me. But when I, I try to tell them, they try so much, but they can't touch my inner mystery. When I try to show them, they say they still can't see. It's the arch in my back, the sun of my smile, the ride of my breast, the grace of my style. I'm a woman, phenomenally. Now you understand just why my head's not bowed. I don't shout or jump about or even have to talk loud. When you see me passing, it ought to make you proud. I say, 
It's in the click of my heels, the bend of my hair, the palms of my hands, the need for my care. Because I'm a woman, phenomenally, phenomenal woman, that's me and all you women and me. But give her another round of applause. As a matter of fact, for all the phenomenal women that we have heard thus far, Ms. Sonoya Williams, Dr. Tanya Perry, and Calandra Terry, please give them another round of applause. All right, coming up next, we have the introduction of the speaker by Ms. Kayla Lang. She is the Executive Secretary of the Student Government Association. Please welcome her to the podium. Dr. Jacqueline Walters is changing the world. As a prominent physician, Dr. Jackie, as she's affectionately known, is gaining a major acclaim and public notoriety as a national expert on women's health, strategic philanthropist, and a rising television star. Dr. Jackie graduated from the University of Mississippi and Alcorn State University, earning dual Bachelor of Science degrees. She later earned her medical degree from the University of Mississippi's School of Medicine. In 1997, Dr. Jackie completed her residency in obstetrics and gynecology from the Medical Center of Central Georgia and Mercer University. After residency, she started a private practice where she also became affiliated with her with Northside Hospital in Atlanta. She has remained in a private practice for 18 years. As a nationally celebrated board certified obstetrician and gynecologist, Dr. Jackie's high profile Clientele consists of the Braxtons, rapper T.I., and superstar Usher. In her practice, Dr. Jackie emerges traditional and steady fast medicine, along with cutting edge method that focuses on the mind, body, and spirit. Her patient focused approach and compassionate care to a diverse population of patients has afforded her recognition as a premier medical specialist in her field. Being a two-time breast cancer survivor, Dr. Jackie understands the effects of personal health challenges. As a dedicated teacher, she has assimilated a women's wellness program into her practice to help eradicate the increasing number of heart disease cases amongst women. In 2013, Dr. Jackie founded the 50 Shades Pink Foundation, an organization that has paid tribute to women and men diagnosed with breast cancer, nurturing the psychological and physical well-being. The charity's mission is to treat the inner and outer beauty of breast cancer survivors. It hosts this annual fundraising luncheon in October that allows the foundation to further awareness through gifting, sponsorship, through various health initiatives, and family workshops. In 2013, Dr. Jackie also burst into the small screen as one of the stars of Bravo's hit reality series, Married to Medicine, where she, the esteemed practitioner, earned her allegiance of her fans and her for her distinct style, sense of reason, sincere compassion, and unrivaled elegance. Dr. Jackie has proved to be an important influence on the show, using her platform to display positive and successful female image while raising awareness on the health issues that people must face each and every day. Dr. Jackie resides in Atlanta with her husband, Curtis. Ladies and gentlemen, Dr. Jacqueline Walters. And we'll be hearing from Dr. Jackie after we have our meals. Right now, we're going to have Ms. Aaliyah Riley, the 67th, Miss Alabama A&M University, perform a praise dance. You're broken down and tired of living life on the merry-go-round. 
you can't find a fighter But I see it in you, so we gon' walk it out Move mountains We gon' walk it out and move mountains And I rise up, I rise like the day I Silence is it quiet And it feels like it's getting hard to breathe And I know you feel like dying But I promise we would take the world to its feet Move our days Bring it to its feet That we have each other I want you guys to loosen up. I'm not that kind of speaker where we all tight. I want everybody to have fun, okay? Remember, this is the year of the woman, so we got to act like it, right? Thank you. Thank you. So if we don't have a theme for this woman's week, I want to have one for us, and it's, it's a woman's world, and you better know it. Okay? So ladies, you better walk in your opportunities right now, because we've been given an opportunity, opportunity that we've been waiting on since the Adam and Eve time. So you better know who you are. So first of all, I always like to thank God. I'm, I'm so grateful that I'm here. I'm so grateful he's given me an opportunity where I can empower, inspire, and uplift. I thank you. I thank my husband and everybody who's been watching the Marriage of Medicine. I can tell you we're on the same team, Jesus. 
So I thank my husband who, who brought me here today. I want to thank Ebony Cummings, who without Ebony, my life would be a mess. So thank you for bridging the gap between my OBGYN life and my Dr. Jackie life. So thank you so much. And most of all, I want to thank you. The one thing you never will ever, ever, ever give back is your time. You know, you can give away a lot of things and you may get it back in something. You give away some, some money, you might give back some money. But when you give away your time, you never can get that back. And one of the most important things about time is you can't get back your time, but the best investment of time is who you're spending it with. So I thank you today for having me here. Again, there's, there's only one thing more precious than your time and who you're spending it with. So thank you. First of all, becoming a woman. I mean, this is the women's week, and becoming a woman, ladies, is not a destination. You didn't wake up and say, okay, I'm a baby, I'm a little girl, I'm an adolescent. You know, it doesn't just work like that. Becoming a woman is an evolution. That evolution involves all the choices that you're going to make along the way, and that is what will determine what kind of woman you are. So for me, it's kind of like surgery. You know, when we go into surgery, I, I know where the uterus is 99.99% of the time. I know where your uterus is. <laughs> but sometimes getting to your uterus and finding how to make it work takes a little work. I got to cut a little bit here. I got to tug a little bit here. You're going to bleed a little bit here. It may cause you a little pain. But becoming that woman is based on the choices you make. Those choices sometimes just like surgery. Is a little painful. And I believe that as women, we are not equal to men. And I know folks, uh, huh? We are more superior. I want you to know that. Okay? So when God created man, he made him, you know, XX. If you know anything about genetics, and I know our, our students in here may know a little about that, it's XX. Uh, XY, I'm sorry, XY. But when he created woman, he created us as a helpmate, which means we had to be smarter because all the help I have is much smarter than me. But he created and gave us XX. And if you ever look at the letter Y, there's a little extra to make it XX. So I believe as women, we're more superior because we're genetically programmed to be more superior. So you better walk in that knowing that you are more superior and you're not just equal to men. And again, as women, we win or we learn. There's no losing for us. So don't ever feel like any mistakes you've ever made is a loss. Because again, we win or we learn. Now, if you haven't figured it out, ladies, life, that is the one thing that can knock you to your knees. And it can leave you knocked on your knees permanently if you let it. Did you hear me? Life will knock you to your knees and leave you there permanently if you allow it to keep you there. And I can tell you, everybody who's watched Marriage to Medicine, if you haven't, who heard about it, who read a blog, <laughs> the most unexpected things in life can come and make you feel like your life is over but I don't allow it to keep me there. So I encourage you today, whatever you're going through, whatever you've gone through, whoever he is, whoever <laughs> it is, whatever job you're on, don't allow life to knock you to your knees. I want you to shake off the what ifs, the whys, and all that, because you know it's kind of a coward to blame your life on anybody else. It's not her fault, it's not his fault. As women, we have to own it and walk in it. No more what ifs, no more whys. There are a couple of crucial things I encourage all women to do, and I certainly do it myself, is sit down and have a personal, uh, introspective conversation with yourself. And look in the mirror when you're doing it so you can see yourself and you answer those questions. A couple of questions I like to ask myself. Is it okay at this point in my life to not have it all together? And I'm very honest with myself, and I need you to look in the mirror and say, right now, where I am today, I've got to pay for education. I got parents who send me money. 
I'm going to a school where they treat me like I'm human and not just like I'm a black person. Is it okay at this point in my life to not have it all together? Am I settling for less? This person you're hanging out with, is he, is she, is that making you feel like you're less? Am I settling for less? Because there's so much more out there, ladies. But ask yourself the hard questions. Do you know your self-worth? That's the one thing about it, and I'm going to say it a couple of times. Your network sometimes will determine your net worth. So am I, do I know my net worth? What is it all about? And then I know the millennials know it. Stay woke. <laughs> it has taken me surrounding myself with the right people, the right millennials, to understand staying woke. So I want you to just sit down, have that introspective conversation, and just find out who are you and answer the hard questions. Now, if you ever want to think about life, I think about it, and I know my sorrows will understand it, the, the, how a pearl comes to life. You know, life is so similar to the life of an oyster and a pearl in that with a, uh, oyster comes on the scene and for whatever reason that shell is pierced and irritant gets on the inside of the oyster on the inside of your life and just like our bodies will have an immune response and send in white blood cells and try to you know kill the bacteria and wall it off so does this happen with the oyster the irritant is there and it sends in this flood of healing uh, fluid and it surrounds whatever the irritant is and it stays there and it stays there until the wound is healed. And if you think about all the things you've been through, I may not have passed this class, I may not have gotten in this program, whatever it is in life, there's an irritant on the scene. And life and, you know, heals itself and at the end of this healing process with the oyster, there's something very beautiful. What is it? It's a pearl. And I think I, I saw somebody, I mean, pearls are absolutely beautiful. And if you think about the process of how that pearl was developed or created or formed, it was an irritant. And sometimes those irritants that come into your life, you may feel like, oh my God, life is over, and I know I felt like it. You're thinking, oh my God, what is it? But I believe everything, every pain that comes into your life, comes with a purpose. So you take your pain and you allow it to give you a purpose. You take all the miseries that come with life, it gives you a ministry. And every struggle that you have in your life, ladies, it will make you strong. So don't ever think that that bad thing you're going through, I didn't get in this program, I may have failed this test, this person's no longer my friend, is a bad thing. Pain has a purpose. Misery gives you a ministry, and struggles will give you strength. But in all that you go through, check your attitude. You know, and if you got black mamas, you've heard that before. You better check your attitude. Because your attitude no long, no, not only determines the altitude, but it determines your abilities. If you've got bad attitudes, your abilities are limited. You've got to do everything and count it all joy. No matter what you go through, you better wake up in the morning and know that you've been equipped to handle whatever life brings. But you determine if you have the ability to handle whatever life is bringing. So I again tell you that your attitude can determine or can limit the abilities. And we all have been given an ability to be way more than the life we're living has told us. I mean, right now, women always thought we were probably the more inferior. We've been paid like we were inferior. We've been treated like we were inferior, but we're actually the superior one on this earth. Don't ever forget it. Now, I want you to read this along with me and don't ever forget it. I read it somewhere and I always like to say it. Mirror, mirror on the wall. Mirror, mirror on the wall. I'll always get up after I fall. Whether I, run, walk, or crawl, Whether I run, walk, or crawl, I'll set my goals and achieve them all. Again, we either win or we learn. 
We're not losing. No matter what you're going through today, no matter what you've gone through, you're learning something. He's preparing you for whatever you have been created for. We'll talk a little bit more about life and its purposes, but don't ever feel like you're losing. We're all learning or we're winning. Adversity is a fact of life. It's going to happen. Don't cry. Don't run from it. Don't try not to face it. And I'll just share my personal story. Last year in March, and I have to, I have to get real strong to talk about this one, but last year in March, two weeks before filming, I get a call in the office. My nurse wanted to see me in my office, and she needed to show me something. And we all know I thought we meant look at some labs, talk about paperwork, whatever it was. And she wanted to show me a blog. And the blog read, Dr. Jackie down in Hilton Head cheating. And we laughed about it, because I'm thinking, I know I wasn't in Hilton Head last weekend. They got this wrong. But my nurse carefully said, I need you to look at this article. And as I look in the article, I see what I didn't want to see. And we all know what I'm talking about. I don't even like to give it too much voice. But my, I thought my life for one second may have been over. But I knew I had 2 o'clock patients, and everybody here know when you cancel your appointments to go see your doctor, the last thing you want me to say is I'm canceling your appointments. So I had to brace myself and walk into the next exam room like nothing had happened. I kept seeing patients. I kept meeting needs, and life kept coming. Everybody who came in that evening had some problem. They wanted some STD check. It was like, Lord Jesus, how much more can I handle? But I wanted you to know I knew I was learning something. I had to keep the strong face going. I called Ebony and we, you know, got together. You know, when you get with your girlfriends, you start, you know, you can be yourself. But we just kept moving. I kept saying adversity is a part of life. It's a fact of life. It is going to come. Don't try to run from it. Don't try to hide from it. But create a plan. Again, all your pain has a purpose. The one thing you can not do is not be prepared for an adversity. When it comes, don't give up, don't cave in, don't quit. Gird yourself up, get ready for the fight. Because again, no matter what level you are, no matter what stage you are in life, young ladies, adversity will come. Remember, becoming a woman is an evolution. And you are evolving into beautiful black women. And the one thing we need now is you guys to be stronger than you've ever been before. We're counting on you. You've become who you are on the shoulders of some of these ladies sitting here. So I'm, I'm warning you that adversity will come. The mere irritants that come into your life can be just that or it can be catastrophic and could change the direction of your life forever. In 2004, I was so excited. I think I had been married for a couple of years. We're excited. And it's like, well, it's time to, time to have a baby. You know, I'm, I'm getting more mature. And I just explained to you, after a certain age, we don't say old anymore. We're more mature. And so I had reached that mature age where I better use these eggs or they're going to they gonna fry and die. So, so I decided we wanted to have a baby. And, you know, after several months of trying, we were excitedly pregnant and probably you know, four or five weeks after finding out, we had a loss with the pregnancy. But I'm a little desensitized to that. I'm thinking, okay, well, you know, it happens. We'll do this again. But I'm at that wonderful mature age where I better go and get my first mammogram. Went in, had a mammogram. I got a phone call back saying you needed a repeat mammogram. And for any of the ladies who understand that, you get the phone call. You're like, okay, I'll go back in. And I'm thinking on the level of a physician, no big deal. I'll go back in. I'll have this mammogram, and we'll keep it moving. I'll get pregnant next month. And so mammogram, and I'm trying to get to surgery at 7 o'clock in the morning, so I did this 6 a.m. mammogram, and, and the mammographer came back in and said, well, we need to do a biopsy. And I'm thinking, you know, i got to be in surgery. I don't have time for a biopsy, but okay, let's do this. Had a biopsy, went on to surgery, told one of my colleagues that I'd had a biopsy. Long story short, I, on the following Monday, made a phone call to pathology because I'm a doctor and I can do that. <laughs> And the young lady wouldn't answer the question. And so long, you know, I'm like, okay, I'll call back at lunchtime. Called again at lunchtime. She couldn't answer the question. So at 3.30, now I'm feeling like, you know, I'm a real doctor now. Hello. You know, I got attitude and everything, and I'm calling. 
and the doctor gets on the phone, speaking kind of in a foreign accent, and he said, you have infiltrating lobular carcinoma. And ladies, if any of you know anything about being a doctor at that time, once I heard that diagnosis, I was no longer a doctor, I was a patient. I had changed the side of the knife, and so I learned I had breast cancer, and you know, long story short, chemo, radiation, going through the motion, and it's like, okay, I, and I prepared myself for it by finding positive affirmation, surrounding myself with the most positive friends and family that I could. Because who knows, we run from those friends who go, hey, how you doing? I, I don't do those people. So uh, moving on, you know, I'm trying to get pregnant again. And then I learned from my colleagues and my friends that after the chemo, I had been rendered infertile from the chemo. So, you know, I'm all about, okay, pain has purpose and I'm moving on. And so four years later, after going in for a mammogram in six months, MRI the next six months, I find out that I have breast cancer for the second time. Now, you know, I'm over it by now, but I'm thinking, okay, I got to do this. So double mastectomy, all of the things that you think you don't ever want to go through, I had that experience, you know. The one time, the one time I wanted my husband to lie to me, the one time <laughs> I asked if he thought my hair was falling out and I really wanted him to say no. And he said, yeah, it's everywhere. It's all over the sink. And I'm you know, thinking, okay, I, I really don't want you to keep talking to me. But long, So I had gone through breast cancer once. I was rendered infertile. I had gone through breast cancer a second time. And so out of all of that pain, I decided I need to give back. And I decided we'd start Fifty Shades of Pink Foundation, which is a breast cancer foundation, which is all about looking good and feel good, because I would dress up every time I would go to chemo. And so I've taken that pain and I've turned it into a purpose. So whatever pain you have going on or whatever you consider pain, and I never make light of anybody's pain. Because if you're going through with something with somebody, we as the more mature women in the room will sometimes kind of blow it off that it's not that important. But whatever you consider pain is pain. But whatever you're going through, take that pain and allow it to create a purpose in your life. If you're going to get there though, guys, in order to change your outside, you gotta start working on your inside. Who am I? How did I get to be this person? What do I need to do to do that? You've got to change yourself before you can change the world. It's totally impossible to be out and be this wonderful person changing the world if your own insides are a little raggedy. I think we're all balancing something. And I shared with you earlier that I, I'm very respectful of other folks' bad days because a lot of times that bad day has absolutely nothing to do with you. And so the last thing we need to do is clap back or get back because you really don't know what another person is balancing when they're having that bad day. So work on changing inside before you can change your outside. And love yourselves unconditionally. Every last woman in this room has a fault. We have something we don't like about ourselves. We want to try to do it better. And we can, certainly can do a lot of things now. We can buy hair. <laughs> we can shrink our noses. We can become light bright if you want to. We can do a lot of things. But I want you to love yourself. And in loving yourself is love where you are in your life. Remember, being a woman is an evolution. And if you don't feel like you're in that perfect place right now, you're evolving. And so love yourselves unconditionally. I started my own little movement along with Ebony called Me Period. And it sure birthed out of all of the, the fun year I had last year. But when you love yourselves, you say me and you put a period on it, that's it. Nobody else can tell you you're not worthy, you're not beautiful, you're not important. You have to love yourself first. You set the tone. You teach people how to love you by the way you love yourselves. And if you allow someone to disrespect you, there's some message you're sending that that's acceptable. But change ain't change until you change. There is an art to transformation. That's a little different. Change, you might mess up next week. And you know, we were talking earlier about uh, eating. And you know, we talked about eating right for 20 days and then you find yourself on day 21 eating bad. 
You've not transformed yet. And part of this evolution is transforming into that woman that you need and want to be. Remember, it's not change until you change, but it all starts somewhere. A journey of a million miles starts with one step. And it feels like it's way over there before you're going to get to that point. But until you take that first step, you haven't started your journey. So remember, change ain't change till you change. This year, I want to commend the black women in Alabama. <laughs> ladies, ladies, ladies. You set the tone for the resistance and the change that's happening in Washington by that special election. You ladies showed up and showed out. That was kind of a pivotal moment in Washington, D.C. when you guys said, we won't accept this anymore. This year has been that transforming year where uh, Tarana Burks, I believe her name, who had that movement where she stood up and said, we will not stand in silence anymore. And for the 17,000 plus women and all the other women who came forth and, and said, me too, it made a difference. For the women, especially the black women who went and marched on Washington in 2017, you made a difference. So we're making a difference. But ladies, we can't stop here. This was only the beginning of the transformation and a part of the evolution of becoming the woman that you need to be. So you, we, I have set the tone for resistance. We've come out in masses. We now have shown the world that we are important also. So again, you give women anything, they make it greater. You give a woman a sperm, she'll turn it into a baby. <laughs> you give a woman a house, she'll turn it into a home. You give a woman groceries, she'll make you a meal. You better know that we are important. You give a woman a smile, and she'll give you her heart. Whatever you give us as women, we make it greater, we make it larger, we're evolving into that woman of importance where the tone has already been set for the year. The difference between who you are and who you want to be depends on what you do. So every decision that you make from this day forth is a part of that evolution. And when you start thinking of evolution, I think about success. And I had somebody to ask me one day, what is success? And how did I feel being successful? And what did I define as success? Well, I, I started thinking about it. And let me tell you, success has absolutely nothing to do with money. Because money will give you things. It might get you places. But that part of you that is success to me, I said success to me is seeing my life make other women want to be like me. That's success. I want my life to empower, to inspire, and to uplift. It doesn't have anything to do with Louboutins, because they hurt anyway. <laughs> it has absolutely nothing to do with the clothes, because if you wear them more than twice, y'all tweet me and tell me I had it on twice. <laughs> It has absolutely nothing to do with a house because there are some rooms we never go in. Success, ladies, again, is who you are and what you're doing with it. Now, I've got this power of peace that I keep, and we talk about passion. You know, passion is, is that burning desire, that burning emotion that you have for something. And if you aren't proud of what you're doing, why should anybody else? And you wonder why people don't treat you a certain way is we don't live out our passion doing the things that make us happy. We live out our passions based on the social media hype. You know, we want to get on, on social media and thank God for social media, but we get on social media and we want to give an image of somebody that we are. I got so upset last week, and everybody know I couldn't talk about it, when I had one of my wonderful millennia patients to tell me, well, Dr. Jackie, the hoes be winning. <laughs> like, I couldn't function all day long. <laughs> I held up her visit. She was held hostage until she could explain to me what did she mean 
about the hoes be winning. She started saying, well, Dr. Jackie, you got to get up every morning and go to work and to get your stuff, and you got to do this and you got to do that. And I said, baby girl, you win or you learn. And you are not winning when somebody else is determining what you get and when you get it. Because the words say you are a slave to the lender. Yes. Yes. <laughs> so I said, so the hoes are being slaves. Okay. They certainly are not winning. So you've got to find your passion. And when you find your passion, you will find your purpose. Now, I don't mislead anybody that you were born for a purpose and that's the only purpose that you have in life. I think the purpose changes with the evolution. Your purpose in college certainly won't be the purpose that you have on the first day of that job. You cannot come to my office and have the same purpose you had in college. Because your purpose at the time is to come in here and do the job that I hired you to do. And so you're gonna find the purpose is a part of evolution, so your purpose will be changing. But your passion will drive your purpose. If you have a purpose, and everybody has a purpose, you just need to tap into it. Because again, if you don't like what you're doing, that might not be your purpose. It may be a part of the evolution, but it may not be your purpose. But again, your passion will determine your purpose. And then there's something, ladies, I want to talk about is persistence. I don't care how many times you knock me down, I'm getting back up. Now, I tell the world, I might not be the smartest girl in my circle, and if you are, you're in the wrong circle, ladies. But I promise you, nobody can outwork me. If it means getting up at 4 o'clock in the morning and I have to get up at 4 to be at the gym by 5, to be in surgery by 6.30, to get out and be at my office by 9, to get to my 5 o'clock filming with Married to Medicine. You cannot outwork me. I am going to stay persistent. I do not care and I encourage you, no matter what life brings, you stay persistent. You constantly, continuously keep doing the same thing if you've got a goal. Now, if you keep doing the same thing and you're trying to get somewhere and you're not getting there, we know what we call that. That's insanity. So stay persistent, constantly preparing yourself for your purpose. Perseverance, that's a little stronger than persistence. When you persevere, I don't care what life brings. I don't care what storm comes your way. I don't care what money you don't have. I don't care what you don't look like, what you don't have to wear. You pers your perseverance will help you to become that woman that you want to be. And preparation, we all forget about that part. We have to prepare, because I, I believe that success is when opportunity meets preparation. You have to prepare for whatever you want to be in life. If it means staying up all night studying, is staying up all night studying. Let me share this. When I went to college, I went to Alcorn State University, and I was laughing earlier because we didn't do college tours back in the day. Your mama told you where you were going to school, and that's where you went to school. <laughs> or if you got a scholarship, that's where you went to school. And so, uh, again, I, I went to college. I was so excited. I met this guy. I was so in love. I could drink 10 gallons of his bath water. I was just so in love, and I didn't want to be a doctor anymore. Because my mother said, you ain't marrying nobody until you finish all your schooling. That wasn't an option back in the day. And so I didn't want to be a doctor anymore. I just want to go to school and be like a med tech or something. So I changed my, my, my avenue and I detoured and I went to med tech school so I could get married. And, and if anybody knows anything about that, as soon as I got to the darn med tech program, the boy dumped me. And you're thinking, well, okay, I'm going to go back to Alcorn. I'm going to finish up a degree. And my mother said, no, you're going to stay here and finish this up. And so I finished up the med tech program, and now I'm all excited. I want to go to medical school. And my mother and father were like, well, where is the money coming from? Mm -hmm. You're thinking, really? And so I had to work for a couple of years to, to prepare and, and went back to medical school. But part of being who I wanted to be is being prepared. I had to prepare myself. I encourage you prepare. You have to get up early sometimes to get prepared. You have to stay late at night to be prepared. But I encourage every woman to prepare. Sometimes we blame it on the devil 
And sometimes we blame it on her or him or that teacher didn't like me because you weren't prepared. So I'm going to tell you again, when you have a passion, it will create a purpose. You're going to stay persistent. You're going to persevere. And you have to prepare. If you are not prepared for life, it will knock you to your knees and it will leave you there. So evolving into the women that you look like, because everybody in this room is beautiful, but evolving into that person, getting out of life what you want to get out of life is going to involve tapping into the peace. Now, I don't know in schools if we can talk about it, but the last one is learning to pray. Now, I don't know about schools, but I'm going to just say for me and my house, we have had to add that last P. Is praying about everything. And it's not. You, you don't have to do anything fancy because the Lord loves you regardless. He made you. It's just simply having that conversation. But you need to be open and honest. We have to be open and honest. If we miss the calling, if we, there's a shortcoming, lying is definitely not going to get you what you want. And God already knows the answer. So please understand, you have to be prepared. You have to pray about it. So remember, this is the year of the woman. We've tapped into something that we've been waiting on for years. You can't sexually harass us anymore. You can't bully us no more. You got to pay us the same thing you pay a man. So in order to be the woman that this opportunity has been opened up to be, to involve into being that beautiful, wonderful woman that you should be, I encourage you to find out your purpose and your passion to stay persistent, to persevere, and to pray. Be the change you want to see. So many times we want to see improvements, but we don't want to be the women to help and to make those changes. So I close by saying, you now have been given an opportunity and a blessing to walk in an area or areas that you've never been given before. So let me encourage you to take that opportunity and be the change you want to see. Thank you. Yes, let's give her another round of applause. We are now going to have presentations. Please welcome Deja Hilliard, Executive Vice President of the Student Government Association. Dr. Wilma Ruffin, President, Alpha Kappa Alpha Sorority Incorporated, Epsilon Gamma Omega Chapter. And we have a change. Please welcome Phyllis Campbell and Jacqueline Dennis from Alpha Kappa Alpha Sorority Incorporated, Rho Chi Omega Chapter. Hello, everyone. Um, Dr. Jackie, we would just really like to um, thank you for taking your time out. Um, on the behalf of Alabama A&M University, the Office of Student Affairs, and everyone in this room, we would like to extend, extend this gift to you. To Dr. Jackie, thank you for that amazing, amazing message and the empowerment spirit and for your spirit. And we thank God for who you are. And we thank God for sending you our way today for us to be a part of what you have said to us. I know the young people here, I would say everything that you've heard, listen, 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 and take it in. At monitor age, it was quite helpful for me. So I'm certain if you listen and listen and listen, it would definitely help you as well. Now, for my reason for being here. 
As the president of Alpha Kappa Alpha Epsilon Gamma Omega chapter, within Alpha Kappa Alpha, when we have our distinguished members come into our community from around the world, wherever they, are, wherever they visit us from, it is a custom that we greet them, welcome them to our community with a gift. It is one of the most pleasant things I am charged to do as the president. And I love it, I enjoy doing it. So I will ask if all members of Epsilon Gamma Omega, will you please stand? So to, to Dr. Jackie, on behalf of the members of Epsilon Gamma Omega Chapter of Alpha Kappa Alpha Sorority, we welcome you to the Rocket City, and we welcome you to the beautiful campus of Alabama a and University. We say to you, will you always find a warm welcome by a fireside in the winter, by the flowers in the garden in the spring, and in the face of a friend and a soror. So look around this room as they stand you see that warm welcome in the face of these, we are known as ego. Oh. <laughs> in the face of these ego women, we welcome you and say thank you for being the dynamic woman you are. Thank you. Thank you. Yeah. Ego. Ego. Thank you. Thank you so much. Good afternoon, Dr. Jackie. You stand. I am representing Mrs. Robin Miller from the Rokai chapter of Alpha Kappa Alpha Sorority Incorporated in Madison, Alabama. And I'm so glad you came to these glorious normal hills. I hope you come back again. And there are a few of the Rokai Mega Chapter members here. Would you please stand? Thank you so much. Some are sick, some are at work. But we love you just the same, and we want you to know you have sisters here. And if you, you want to hide out from Atlanta, call us. We got you. All right. <laughs> there you go. Good. My posse is getting bigger. Yes, ma'am. <laughs> Thank you. Thank you so much. Now we'll have a musical selection and dance performance from Hydea Burgess and the Young's School of Dance. Hydea is the president of the National Panhellenic Council. Hello everyone, again, my name is Heidi A. Burgess. I'm from Oakland, California. I'm a chemistry major with a minor in computer science and biology. I am a member of Sigma Gamma Rho Sorority Incorporated, where I am the vice president. I as well am the president of the National Panhellenic Council here on Alabama A&M's campus. And I am a member of the Bulldog Pride Committee. <laughs> so that's all about me. Today I will sing um, Get Still I Rise by Yolanda Adams, so I hope that you all enjoy.
Absolutely amazing. Give them another round of applause. Now, please welcome to the podium for reflection and remarks, Mrs. Abigail Hugini, the First Lady of Alabama A&M University. In Proverbs 31, there was a noble woman. This woman, woman's life was dedicated to service to others, her husband, her children, her servants, and the poor and needy. She served them eagerly, resourceful and with strength. She was neither hindered nor demeaned by serving others. Rather, she was fulfilled by it because godly service is the source of true nobility. Good afternoon. This has been a delightful program, and because I was given this task, we can all go home right now, but because I was given this task, I will complete it. <laughs> so, our women have always been an integral part of our society from the beginning of creation. So it's only befitting that we stop today to celebrate the noble, resourceful, strong women that we are. To our speaker, Dr. Jackie, 
thank you for epitomizing the characteristics of this noble woman in Proverbs 31. You are dedicated, you are professional, you are an encourager, a trailblazer, and a survivor. Thank you. Thank you for those inspiring words. We are all benefactors of such wise advice. We will take what you have said today and integrate them into the programs here at Alabama A&M University. You also have an open invitation to return anytime in the future. Um, a special thank you to um, Reverend Jerutha Wright, who will come to you in a few minutes, my first lady. Um, all the program participants that you've seen um, on the program, Mrs. McDowell, Dr. Perry, Ms. Terry, Ms. Riley, Ms. Burgess, and the Elon dancers, um, all have been excellent today in their roles. So thank you again. I would also like to take the opportunity, opportunity to, to thank Dr. Crosby, the Vice President for Student Affairs, um, Dr. Uh, Mrs. Diane Greer, the Director of Student Activities, and Mr. Gary Edwards, the Program Director, for a wonderful program. This has been an awesome program, don't you think? I also would like to give a shout out to the amazing women here on the campus of Alabama A&M University. And I think this event is very timely because we work hard every day. And to take the time to recognize you is very wonderful. So thank you again, Ms. Greer, for this concept and idea. At this time, so you can see these beautiful women in their different roles, Dr. Jackie, I would like for, to, for them to stand. First of all, the administrators. Any woman serving in an administrative role here at Alabama A&M University, will you please stand? Now our faculty members, any faculty members, please stand. Okay. Staff members, staff members. Okay. And then we have some uh, uh, persons in our audience who are uh, retirees of Alabama A&M. Will you please stand? <laughs> And also, the alumni of Alabama A&M University, will you please stand? <laughs> and before I introduce the best students that we have, Dr. Jackie, in all colleges and universities, I would like to give a shout out to our young men who have been a part of this program today. They have been absolutely marvelous. Yes. And Mr. Friend, Tommy Friend, the wonderful music, and all of the young men who serve as escorts and serve in a role in very uh, well today. Now, all the best, lovely young ladies at Alabama A&M University and Dr. Jackie, they are smart, talented, memorable. Will you please stand and let Dr. Jackie see who you are? <laughs> yes. And I'm not just saying that, they are wonderful students. So thank you, um, students, for your attendance today. A lot of students are on spring break, but I think this is a good representation of the students we have here at Alabama A&M. Uh, we also, in your bag somewhere near you, there are some goodies. And um, I do not have the list of vendors, but if you see someone you recognize, please support that vendor. Because, because of those persons' generosity that you have those beautiful bags today. And they are beautiful. <laughs> and I am also, uh, you know, I take for granted sometimes Mr. Morns in the back and Mr. St. Jones for their roles as well. Uh, so we would like to thank them as well for serving in those roles today. Um, let us all leave here today knowing that we are phenomenal women. We are dedicated, we are noble, we are resourceful, we are energetic, and we are going to take on the challenges that Dr. Jackie has presented to us today. So I hope that you have had a wonderful time today. 
Thank you, the Aramar staff, for this wonderful, delicious meal, uh, Mrs. Wilson and her staff, and I know that you will continue, continue to continue to enjoy the rest of the day. God bless all of you, and may Dr. Um, Ms. I keep calling you doctor. Maybe there's a, an omen or something there, there <laughs> prophetic there. Uh, Mrs. Uh, Greer will uh, do this again next year. So thank you all for coming, and you look absolutely wonderful. Have a good evening. We would like to take a moment to thank the Women's Week Committee. We would like to thank Mrs. Diane H. Greer, the chairperson. And please stand, thank you when I call your name. Ms. Deja Hilliard, the co-chairperson. Mrs. Courtney Boyd. Ms. Raven Chappelle. Mrs. Sandra Stubbs, Ms. Tia Garner, Ms. Susan Eason, Dr. Pamela H. Thompson, and Ms. Lula Yarborough. Please continue to give these phenomenal women another round of applause for their hard work and dedication. Now please welcome to the podium for closing prayer, Reverend Joretha Wright, the First Lady of St. John AME Church. Oh, you all can do better than that. You can do way better than that. Oh, I've been waiting all day to get up here and say that. First, giving honor to God. There's one thing I want us to do that I know that in this generation, we don't empower our young girls to do, and that is compliment each other. We're such haters. Is that, is that the new word? Is that, is that an old word? Y'all don't say haters no more. So I want you to do one thing before I do the benediction. I want you to look at your girl on the right and left to her, the right and left, and say, you look marvelous, girl. Girl, you look marvelous, girl. I'm just saying, when you go somewhere, if you come with no self-esteem, you need to leave with a little bit of esteem. Is that all right? All right. Let everyone stand. You never know what the sister next to you is going through. As a matter of fact, I'm going through something right now. But there's one thing that I recognize that if it had not been for the sister to my left and the sister to my right, I would not have evolved into the woman I am today. And so it's important that we start looking out for each other. And as you grab the hand next to you, for you believers, for you almost believers, for you want to be believers, and for the non-believers, there is a God one that I serve all heart and soul. Squeeze that hand as we begin to pray for that sister. I need you to survive. God, we are sisters, but we are not afraid to fight. We are not afraid to fight for our sisters enslaved by human trafficking. God, we are not afraid to fight. Grant us the strength, God. We are not afraid, God, to fight for our sisters that are stressed, oppressed, depressed, lonely, grieving, suffering, rejection, abandoned, impoverished, incarcerated, miseducated, fighting mental illness. We are not afraid to fight for our sisters in need of you, Lord. We need you, Lord, and we need you. Stand with me. Stand with me, God. Lord, for all the 
women that stand here today in need that are afraid to stand in the authority that you have given them but we claim the victory today that we leave out of here in power to be strong women women with a voice that are not afraid to stand in music God women that love one another and respect one another and begin to treat each other with dignity Let's do it one more we time. Come on, open your mouth and say, I need and you. Now, Lord, I pray I that you need me. Let me hear me. You need me. You need me. That you would guide them on the highways. That you would protect the students the and the institutions. The that you would develop their minds. Stand, stand with me. Stand with me. Agree with me. And Lord, Agree with me. Today, dear Lord, I speak healing over each and every one. I speak deliverance over each and every one of us right now, God. And together we all say, Thank you, God. We say amen. We say amen. And we say amen. Can you just sing a little bit of this to each other? You are important to me. You are important to me. Give her a hug. Give her a big hug. Oh, bigger than that. I pray for you. Pray for you. you pray for me. I love you. I love you. I need you, so I need you to survive. I won't harm you with words from my mouth. I love you. I need you to yes, survive. I'm 